Okay, so welcome to this video looking at the AS Pure series on quadratics. Now there's a lot in this video, so it's quite a long one, so sorry about that, but I would have been doing you a disservice if I was to shorten any of these or reduce some of the content in some, for some of these questions. So it is quite a long one, but there's a lot of content to go through. As you can see on the screen, these are all the things that we're going to look at. And there is an awful lot that is crossover from GCSE and obviously a lot that then builds into this AS Pure module. So we're going to be looking at quadratics, but before we do, just want to show you obviously to make sure how to use this video. So let's just have a quick look. So when you're on one of these videos, obviously the screen will look like this. And if you click on the video to pause it, you'll have a selection uh, or that little button down there that allows you to look at the chapters. So if you go into the chapters, you'll see on the side or on your computer, it might come up below. Just to the side here, it lists all the different topics that you can go through. So if I click on expanding three binomials for this last video, it then brings up the topic of expanding three binomials. If you then click into the description, which pops up on the right here, you'll see that there is a revision video Video where it is bookmarked to the side. So if you want to do, uh, or if you want to go further into expanding three binomials, for example, you can click the link and it will take you to a full lesson on that topic. So hopefully that's really helpful and just explains how to use these videos in a little bit more depth. So again, these are the topics that we're going to be looking at. Hopefully that little explanation was helpful. Again, please do like the video, please share it with your friends, and obviously please leave a comment on any content that you'd like to see in the future. But with that being said, let's get started. <laughs> So this question here, we've got a 2x squared. So again, I'll link in the description the, the video for obviously factorising harder quadratics. So I will explain them a little bit, but I won't go into as much depth as I did in that video. So do check that one out if you're not sure on how to factorise these. Now in terms of a 2x squared, that means in one of our brackets here, we're going to have to have a 2x when we're factorising it. So if I set the brackets up, we've got a 2x and an x. It's all equal to 0. And we just need to figure out where the numbers go. Now if we've got a 1 at the end, our only factors can be 1 and 1. But one of them is going to be double. Doubled. Okay, obviously when we expand our double bracket here, we've got a 2x and it's going to double that 1 in, in, in the other bracket. So as they're both 1s, we know they're both going to be 1s here. We just need to figure out the symbols. Now we want minus 1x or minus 1 in the middle. So in order to make minus 1, we're going to want plus, positive 1, take away 2. So as this one over here is going to be doubled, we'll make that one become our minus 2. And this will be our positive 1 here. And you obviously you can go about expand, uh, expanding that just to check that it matches. But there we go, that is going to match. We're going to get plus 1 on this expansion here, plus 1x. And we're going to get minus 2x when we expand that one there. And that will give us minus 1 in total. So in terms of obviously getting our solutions here, it's very similar to what we just looked at. If we just set them both equal to 0, this one here is just going to become x equals 1. Obviously we haven't got a coefficient there. And this one here. We're going to flip the sign, so x is going to equal minus 1, but then we're going to divide it by the 2. So minus 1 over 2, or minus a half. And there's our two solutions, x is minus a half, and x equals 1. And again, you could obviously draw your sketch of your quadratic there. Just think about what it looks like. It's going to go through 1 and minus a half. And you could draw that in. There we go, 1 and minus a half. And that's where our two solutions are. Now in this one, the process isn't any different, but we've got something that's going to change here. I just want to show you this, and it's in this negative 11 here in front of x. So if I write down my values of a, b, and c, we have a equals 3, b equals negative 11, and c equals negative 13. And if I go ahead, plug in all these values in, I've got to just have a look at what changes here. So the start of our quadratic formula is minus b, but b is already negative. So if b is already negative, that's going to turn into positive 11. So on the top there, we have positive 11. Now, I don't have to put the plus with it there, but I just want to emphasize for you, it's going to be plus 11. Okay, so minus b, if b is already negative, that's going to become a positive number there. So we have 11 plus or minus the square root of, and again, I've got to be careful here because I've got to do b squared. Now, when I'm squaring a negative number and subbing a negative number in, I should always really put it in brackets. So negative 11 squared. Reason behind that, and hopefully you've got your calculator in your hand, if you type in negative 11 squared without the brackets, you're going to get negative 121. And a negative times a negative makes a positive, so your calculator is not going to do it in the correct order for you. It's going to do the um, 
the power before it does the, the minus there. Okay, so you just gotta be very careful, it does the order of operations. So if you wanna make sure it squares a negative number, stick it in a bracket, that's very, very important when B is negative. So we've got B squared minus four AC, so four times three times negative 13. Okay, let's just extend that, there we go. And that's all over two A to all over two times three. Again, on this question, look, that and that was new this time. The minus B turning positive and the negative B in the bracket there when you're squaring it, so being very, very careful with that. But there are new bits that you need to be careful on this type of question. So let's type this in. Again, we'll do the positive and we'll do the negative. There we go. And we'll stick these values in. So fraction button, positive 11, so just 11, plus the square root of, in brackets, negative 11 squared. Take away four times three times negative 13, all over six or two times three. Press equals and turn it into a decimal. You've got 4.607219496. And again, finishing that off by rounding it to three significant figures here again, we've got 4.61. There we go, and there's our first solution. Moving on to our next one, back into the calculator. It's a little bit of a while to click back. There we go. Swap it for a minus. And we get minus 1.5866068.75. There we go. And then finishing this off, rounding it again, that becomes negative 1.59 because it's a six there after the eight. And there's our two solutions. So when it comes to this question here, obviously this is what we're gonna complete the square for, and we're gonna find the turning point to start with and have a look at how we apply it for, for that as well. So when we've got this one here, now this is our um, quadratic that we have at the moment, two x squared plus 16 x plus 26. Now we can only complete the square, well I say, I say we can only, we, we, we have to get the coefficient of x squared to be one first before going about completing the square. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna factorize it by a factor of two, okay? So that as they all divide by two there, or just because x squared has a two in front of it, we're gonna take a factor of two out. So if I factorize this by two, I get two lots of, and then dividing everything by two, we get the one x squared, we get eight x, and we get 13 at the end. There we go. Now all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna basically ignore that that two is at the front. So all I'm gonna do is factorize or complete the square for what's in the middle here, okay? Obviously we've factorized it there, we've taken out a factor of two, and now we're gonna complete the square for what's inside. So normal process for completing the square, I am gonna halve the coefficient of x. So in my bracket, I'm gonna have x plus four, obviously halving the eight there, and that is gonna be squared. Obviously rem remembering why we do that, because when we expand that, we get the x squared, we get the eight x, but at the end, if we expand it, we'd get plus 16. Now we don't want plus 16, we want the plus 13 there, so we're gonna to have to take away three to make this balance out. So I will have to put minus three at the end. And now if I did expand and simplify all of that, I would get the x squared plus eight x, I'd get plus 16, take away the three, and that'd leave me with the 13 that I'm looking for. Now obviously we can't forget that that two exists, that two is still at the front there, and we have to bring that two back in. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put all of this in a bracket, and rather than using a rounded bracket, I'm gonna put it in a square bracket, just to define, obviously it's a different set of brackets there, and I'm just gonna put that two back at the front. Right, there we go, well we're almost done. All I've gotta do now is reintroduce that two, and that just means expanding out this square bracket by that two, and that's easy enough to do. We've got two lots of uh, the bracket there, so I'm just gonna write this out. Let's see what we've got. We've got two lots of the x plus four squared. There we go, and then timesing that negative three by two will leave us with negative six. And there we go, that's that completed uh, in completed square form. All we have to do now is obviously, like before, we identify the turning point from what's in the bracket there. So just like before, the x coordinate is right here, but we flip the sign. So that is gonna be negative four as our x coordinate. And our y coordinate is just at the end there, the minus six. So there we go, our y coordinate is minus six. 
there we go and that's the coordinates of our turning point so very very similar to obviously normal completing the square but obviously we just have this extra element there uh, of factorizing out that coefficient of x squared and then reintroducing it at the end and just multiplying that number at the end there that what was normally our y intercept um, or I'm sorry our y coordinate and actually just multiplying that uh, back out by the factor that we took out at the start so this question, we've got 2x squared at the start, okay, and obviously when we're completing the square here, we do have to take, in, to take that into account, and we are going to first complete the square. It then says, hence solve the equation, so just like the last one, and giving your answer in the form a plus b root 3, where a and b are integers. So let's start with completing the square. So we'll take out that factor of 2, so we have two lots of x squared minus 4x minus 8, okay, and then let's complete the square for what's inside. I'm going to swap colours like I've done before. There we go. So half that coefficient of x, and we have x minus 2 in bracket squared. And that's going to make plus 4 at the end, and we want minus 8, so we're going to have to subtract 12 there to make that balance out. Reintroducing that 2. Let's see what we get. There we go. Reintroduce the 2, and we have 2 lots of x minus 2 squared minus 24. Now for the second part of this question here, it says hence solve the equation. So we're going to do exactly the same thing. We're going to set it equal to zero. So if I set this equal to zero, and I'll do it separately up here, we have two lots of x minus 2 squared minus 24 equals zero. Now it's completely up to you in, t in, in terms of the steps that you do here, but there's a couple of things that we can get rid of from the start. Either we can get rid of this 2 at the start, we could divide everything by 2, or we can uh, add this 24 over to the other side. Now personally, I just like to add the 24 over first, but it's completely up to you in terms of which order that you do it. I'll show you why it doesn't really matter. But if I add the 24 over, let's have a look. We get 2 lots of x minus 2 squared equals 24. Now at this point I'm going to divide by 2, so that's going to turn that 24 into a 12. Now you could have divided by 2 at the start, it wouldn't obviously affect the 0 over here, so 0 would still be 0, but you've just got to remember if you do divide by that number you also have to divide the 24 by 2 because that's going to become 12 on the other side, and you've got to make sure you divide everything by 2 on that left hand side of the equal sign. So personally I just like to add it over first, I feel like it just helps you not to forget to also divide that by 2 as well. So if we go about dividing by 2 now, we can get, we'll get x minus 2 squared equals 12 and then it's exactly the same as the last question now we can square root both sides and we get x minus 2 equals plus and minus the square root of 12 and then we can add that 2 over to finish it off and if we add the 2 over let's see we run out of space a little bit here but we get x equals 2 plus and minus the square root of 12 Obviously we do just need to have a look, and let's just bring this up here, we do need to have a look at obviously writing it in the form it wants, and it wants it as b root 3. So we need to think obviously about that root there, and that is root 12, and how does that simplify? Well let's have a look, root 12, the square number that goes into that is 4, so we can write that as the square root of 4, times by the square root of 3, and the square root of 4 is 2, so that's 2 root 3. So finishing this off then, we can write it in the form it's asking for, and that is that x equals 2 plus and minus, 2 root 3. And there is our final answer, writing it in that third form that it's asking for in this question. Now, just a very quick discussion of this before you maybe try and have a go, but you will notice that the coefficient of x for 1 is an odd number, so when completing the square that's going to form a decimal, although you can use a calculator for this question, but there is going to be decimals involved. And a little hint for you, this one doesn't factorise. And when a quadratic doesn't factorise, you need to use the quadratic formula. So this is a calculator question. The rest of those could have been non-calculator. But this one here is explicitly calculator. So a couple of little hints there. But I would encourage you to have a go. This is our last little question. So if, I, if you pause the video and have a go, otherwise, let's have a go at going through this one. So... If I go about completing the square to start with, it wants us to draw a sketch showing the coordinates of the turning point and any intersections with the axes. So, let's take out that factor of minus one. So when we do that, we get x squared plus three x minus five. Now if we complete the square for this, it's not too difficult, particularly as we have a calculator, but we get x plus 1.5, or you could leave it as a fraction three over two squared. Now when you expand that bracket, 1.5 squared is 2.25, and we need to get back to negative 5. 
So you can do that on the calculator if you want, if you need to, but we're going from 2.25 down to zero and then an extra five. So we're gonna have to take away 7.25 to get down to minus five. Now we need to multiply that minus one back in, just like we have done before, to put that minus one back on the outside. And we get minus one lots of the x plus 1.5 squared minus 7.25. And obviously when we times that minus one in, it becomes plus 7.25. So there we go, we've got the coordinates of the turning point, not too bad there hopefully. Minus 1.5, the opposite in the bracket, and then 7.25 for our y coordinate. And again, we can solve it from here. And if we go about doing that, um, let's see what we're gonna get. Now, we could solve it from there, but we should really just solve it from the original quadratic. Once we've identified the fact that it doesn't factorize, we may as well just use the original quadratic because it's not really gonna matter which one we use there. So if we bring the original quadratic down uh, and we solve from there, we've got our values of a, b, and c that we're gonna have to put into the quadratic formula. So a is the number in front of x squared, which is minus one. b is the number in front of x, which is minus three and c is the number at the end or at the start in this case which is the five and if we plug all that into the quadratic formula so obviously you need to know the quadratic formula for this as well so i'll, I'll put that in the description don't worry everything that's gone on in this will be linked in the description for you to have a go at i'll try and put them in order for you as well for how they've occurred in the video but if we put those into the quadratic formula let's have a look so we have minus b at the start so that's positive three now when we flip that plus and minus the square root of b squared so negative three in brackets squared, take away four times negative one times five, and that's all over two a or minus two, two lots of minus one. Now if we type that into the calculator, obviously using the fraction button there and just being careful how you sub all these numbers in, using the negative button for your negative one, putting your negative number in bracket there for the b squared. For the version with the plus sign, we get, and I'm gonna round these to two decimal places for this one, it doesn't actually say two in this question, but for the purpose of our sketch, we're not gonna to wanna to write all these decimals. It comes out as minus 4.19 to two decimal places. And if I go back into my calculator, change that plus for a takeaway, our version with the takeaway comes out as, and again to two decimal places, 1.19. So there we go. Um, obviously in a question like this, we would just leave it as a full decimal if it didn't say how to round it. But for the purpose of this little bit of practice, we're not gonna worry too much about that. So obviously we've got a negative and a positive solution again. So if we draw our quadratic, again, we're just gonna do a little sketch. And it's gonna go, let's have a look. Minus four over to one. I'm trying to make it as accurate as I can or not, not over-egging the uh, whereabouts it is on the graph too much. But there we go, we've got minus 4.19. Over here, we've got positive 1.19. We've got a y-intercept, which again, we can get from our original equation of five. And we have our turning point, which is just here. Not the best drawing there by me, but minus 1.5, 7.25. Just about get that on there. Okay, obviously just emphasizing the fact that that turning point is to the left of the y-axis as we have a negative 1.5 as the x-coordinate. So there we go, really, really tiny little sketch there at the bottom, but just showing you how this could obviously get a little bit harder. Obviously with completing a square with an odd number as the coefficient of x, but if you have a calculator, that's nice and easy enough. And then obviously using the quadratic formula as well. So it was a pretty tough question to finish on. Now the discriminant is something that you have met before, uh, usually in, uh, obviously from GCSE maths, you'll have met the quadratic formula. And it's something to do with something within the quadratic formula. So if we have a look and just have a quick think about the quadratic formula, which is minus b plus and minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Now normally, particularly at GCSE level, when you've looked at the quadratic formula, it's very rare that anything other than uh, a positive number comes up underneath that square root. Although you will have noticed before, maybe you've typed it in incorrectly sometimes, and you may have found that obviously sometimes it came up with a maths error on your calculator when you type in something under here. And you've got to be very careful with the numbers that you type into there. Um, but obviously, whether, but depending on whether it's a certain type of number, depends on whether we get an answer on our calculator or we don't. And that's what we're going to have a look at and actually understanding this bit. 
Now that bit on its own, underneath the square root, that b squared minus 4ac is what we call a discriminant. And it determines when we have a quadratic, how many solutions we have and whether we even have a solution at all. And we're gonna have a look at why and how that happens and a few particular questions here and the differences between them. But essentially, if we forget about the rest of the quadratic formula for the moment, we are just concerned with this bit, this b squared minus 4ac, and that is what we call the discriminant, okay? So we're just gonna be having a look at this bit. Um, so I'm just gonna write that up up here. We've got b squared minus 4ac, and that is called our discriminant. Now, so grab a piece of paper, grab a pen, make some notes. We're gonna get started with these questions here, and just have a look at understanding why and how uh, we get our solutions from this little bit under the square root. Now, if you think about the concept of numbers, underneath a square root, okay, we can have uh, three different types of numbers. We can have a whole number, and let's pick something that actually um, square roots, something like 25, and the square root of 25 would, would give us two solutions. We can get plus 5, and we can get minus 5. So we get two solutions when there is a whole number under there. Sometimes it'll be an actual whole number, sometimes it might be a decimal, okay, but we always get two solutions with a whole number. We can also have the number zero, and if we get the number zero, obviously the square root of zero is zero, but thinking about the rest of the quadratic formula, that would mean we'd only get one solution, because obviously in front of the square root there you have the plus and minus, and if both the plus and the minus are both zero, then both of our solutions are going to be equal. Or we could have, and thinking about when this uh, arises, you could get a negative number under there, so something like negative three, let's just put something random in, and you will get no answer on your calculator. It will normally say calculator error, and that's because we'll get no solutions, or in terms of a quadratic when we're solving that, we would call that no roots or no real roots, okay? No roots, there we go, I'll put that in there. So thinking obviously about the concept of the quadratic formula, and obviously I will link the video for that in the description if you need to touch up on the quadratic formula, but in terms of the type of numbers that go underneath that square root, we'll determine what answers we get when we look at these solutions. And that's what we're gonna have a look at with some of these questions. So this first one that I've got on the screen, I'm just gonna get rid of all of this, is looking at a particular quadratic. And I have put a picture of this quadratic up here, uh, and we'll see obviously that we get these two roots or two solutions here on the x-axis. So the equation for this particular quadratic is up here, x squared plus four x plus two. And in terms of actually figuring out the discriminant of that, and we're gonna work out the value of the discriminant, we just need to plug in the values of a, b, and c. Now, a is the number in front of x squared, hopefully you're already happy with that, and a in this particular case is one. B is the number in front of X, so B is positive four, and C is that number at the end, and C is two. And if we stick all of these numbers into the discriminant, so B squared minus four AC, let's see what we get. So we've got four squared, our value of B, take away, and then we have four times A, which is one, times C, which is two. And if we just work out this calculation here, four squared is 16, take away four times one times two, which is eight, we get 16, take away eight, and we get the answer eight. So the value of our discriminant is eight. And if we think about that, if it was put into the quadratic formula, we would have plus and minus root eight, which would give us our two values underneath the square root there. Okay, and that would give us our two solutions and ultimately determine these two solutions, okay? So in terms of stating whether this, uh, obviously without the graph, has two roots, two equal real roots, which we'll discuss in a second, no real roots, we know that obviously with the positive eight there, with the plus and minus square root of eight, we would have two roots, and we call those two distinct roots, okay? But I'm just gonna put two roots here for this particular example, and we can obviously see that from the graph as well. But there's two elements there, we've got the value of the discriminant and the fact that it has two roots, which obviously is also shown on the graph. So this question, it says, 4x minus five minus x squared also equals or is equal to q minus x plus p squared, where p, uh, q and p are integers. So obviously that there is highlighting the fact that it can be written in completed square form like that, which looks ever so slightly different to the way that we've been writing it in the earlier questions, but we're gonna have a look at how to actually write it like that. So it says, find the values of P and the values of Q. And then it starts to ask us some other little bits here. It says, calculate the discriminant. And then it also says, sketch the curve, showing any points of intersection. So we'll have a look at those points step by step. To start with, we're gonna have a look at, obviously finding the values of P and Q and writing it in this completed square form just here. So let's write it out. So we've got negative x squared, and obviously this is a bonus because we've already discussed how to complete the square for this. Okay, but let's have a look, minus five. So if we take out that factor of minus one to complete the square, 
we will get positive x squared minus 4x plus 5. And completing the square for that, let's obviously halve that coefficient of x. So we get x minus 2 in brackets squared. And when we expand that, we get plus 4. We want plus 5, so we need to add in an extra plus 1 there. And then again, not forgetting to reintroduce that minus 1, because that affects that y coordinate at the end there. So minus 1. And we end up with minus 1 lots of x minus 2 squared. And then that turns that into minus 1 at the end. Now obviously it wants it written in this form up here, okay, Q take away those, so all that means is putting minus 1 at the start there, okay, and, and just shifting this minus 1 from the end and putting it here at the start. And if I write it out like that, we have minus 1 take away the 1 lot of that bracket, so I can get rid of that 1, there you go. And there it is, minus 1 take away x minus 2 in brackets squared. So now it's in the format that we want, we can write out what the value of p and what the value of q is. So q is at the start, so q is the minus 1 there at the start, and p is negative 2 inside the bracket. There we go. And I always dislike that when they write it like this, look they've written plus p just here, and actually p's come out as a negative there, p is negative 2. So do just watch out for that, just because they put plus p there doesn't necessarily mean it's going to come out as a plus or a positive number. So the next bit, right, it says calculate the discriminant of this, okay? Now when we're looking at the discriminant, and again I've linked the video for that in the description, we're looking at the value underneath the square root in the quadratic formula, that b squared minus 4ac, which is called the discriminant. And it determines for us how many roots this is going to have. So rather than getting us to actually factorise this, if it does factorise, and finding out whether there are two distinct real roots, two equal real roots, or no real roots, we're actually working out the discriminants, okay? So if we will put, put these values in then, let's see what we've got. So obviously, um, we need to get the values of A, B, and C from here. Now I'm going to take it instead from up here where I've rearranged it. So the value of A is that one in front of x squared there. So A equals the negative 1 in front of the x squared. We've got b, which is in front of the x, so the positive 4, so b equals 4. And then we've got to forget c as well, which is the number at the end, which is minus 5. So there we go, c equals minus 5. And if we sub all these values into b squared minus 4ac, let's see what we get. We get 4 squared, take away 4 times minus 1 times minus 5. There we go. And if we work that out, let's have a look, just multiplying all these bits together to start with. 4 times minus 1 is minus 4, times minus 5 is positive 20. So we have 16 take away positive 20, or 16 take 20, which is minus 4. So my discriminant has a value of minus 4. Now obviously what we know about the discriminant, obviously hopefully you've already checked that video out and you know about the discriminant, if we get a negative number that, me that means we have no real roots. So in terms of this uh, quadratic that we're going to draw, it's not going to cross through the x-axis and that's what that tells us. And obviously if we were asked to draw this curve and we weren't asked to calculate the discriminant, we might be sitting there trying to factorise it, or we might be putting it into a calculator trying to get it in the quadratic formula, but actually very quickly we can tell using the discriminant whether it does actually have any roots. So it's a nice quick way for us to figure that out. And obviously this question asks us to do it anyway, but just thinking about another type of question, if it didn't ask us to calculate the discriminant, uh, you know, it would be a nice quick way just for us to see whether it does factorise or not. And that's quite nice about the discriminant as well. So if we go about actually drawing this, if we want to sketch this curve, showing clearly any points of intersection with the axes, let's have a think about what it would look like. We know that it's going to be an upside down uh, or an N-shaped uh, quadratic curve here. So if I just draw a little basic axes, one thing we do need to get is obviously that uh, y-intercept, which we've got up here, the y-intercept is minus 5. So that's going to be down here somewhere. So I probably want to draw this a little bit better actually. Let's get rid of that, let's draw it so we can get actually down the bottom there. So we know it's going to be minus 5, we know it doesn't even reach the x-axis. So there we go. Um, the only thing we need to figure out is whereabouts we're going to put it. Now we can we can think about where the maximum point is because we've completed the square up here. So we've completed the square and we have got from that, just here, we've got positive 2 and minus 1 as our turning point. And if we go about actually finding that, let's imagine 2 is there, minus 1 is there, so it's around here. And there we go. So if I try and draw this in then, we've got it crosses through at minus 5 got a maximum point there and it never touches the x-axis and obviously just labeling this on we've got minus 5 there 
and that's all we need to label. It doesn't ask us to label the maximum point there. We could put it on if we wanted. But there we go, there is a sketch of what this curve actually looks like there. We've got the minus five, the y-intercept up from our uh, equation up here. Okay, well, let's write that in. y equals minus five. There we go. And we've got the fact of where the turning point was gonna be positioned just here from completing the square again. And then using the discriminants, we figured out there was gonna be no roots, so we know it wasn't gonna get up to the x-axis there. So there we go, that's how we go about all of these points. Obviously completing the square to find the turning point to get an idea of whereabouts it's gonna be positioned. Uh, obviously then uh, getting the y-intercept from our equation and using the discriminant to figure out whether it was gonna to touch the x-axis or not. Now I would encourage you to obviously just pause the video, have a read of this question before we start going through it because there's a lot of information, a lot of questions and a lot of things that are probably just worth reading before we actually get started. So I'll give you an opportunity to do that now. Okay, so a javelin is thrown over level ground from the top of a tower and the height in metres of the javelin above the ground after t seconds is modelled by this function. So we've got the function here for t and it says 12.25 plus 14.7t minus 4.9t squared where t is greater than zero. There we go. So it says here interpret the meaning of the constant and then it starts to give us some more questions. So what we're actually going to have a look at is just thinking about what this will look like in terms of a function, in terms of a quadratic and sketching that and then we'll have a look at answering all of these little questions. Now before we do that I'm just going to make this a little bit smaller so hopefully maybe you've made some notes on that, you've written it down because this is going to be a little bit harder to read because we need quite a bit of space. So I'm going to push that to the side and we're going to carry on looking at it from here. So if we were going to draw a little sketch of this and we kind of imagine what this would look like on a graph. So if we draw a basic little axis, and it does only have to be a little sketch here, you don't really even have to draw this, but it does help us just to visualise it. So we're standing on the top of a tower, and let's imagine that's on the y-axis there, and we're throwing a javelin, and let's just say this is the top of our tower, and we're going to throw that javelin, and let's go for a different colour, to the right, and that is going to make a nice quadratic curve, and it's going to land somewhere down there. Now obviously if we were going to model the entire quadratic, the actual curve itself would continue, but obviously we know here we're throwing it forwards off the tower, so we don't really need to know about that. But it does help us just to kind of visualise what's going on. Now if we look at the actual um, function here, we've been given a load of numbers. Now we should already know from sketching quadratics and just knowing about coordinate geometry and our line equations, that one of those numbers there is our y-intercept, and it's the constant number, so not the t squared or the t, but the 12.25. So that 12.25 there in our function indicates where it crosses through the y-axis, and in the case of this question, that is actually indicating the height at which it is thrown from. So that's 12.25. Now straight away that actually answers part A for us because it says here interpret the meaning of the constant term 12.25 in the model. Well that is the height of the tower or in other words the height at which the javelin is going to be thrown from and in this case that is the height of the tower. So that's the answer to part A, it's going to be the height of the tower. Let's have a look at part B. It says after how many seconds does the javelin hit the ground? Now obviously if we're looking at how many seconds it takes for the javelin to hit the ground, we first need to just think about the axes here. We already know that 12.25 in terms of this diagram is our height, so we can label that axis as h, and our other part of the axis is gonna be our time. And obviously we could label that as t, which it's given us in the question, and that time is in seconds. So if we wanna find where the javelin hits the ground, we're looking at specific points on this quadratic, and specifically we're looking at the solutions, these points here, and obviously this point here if we were to go backwards. They're the two key points, but we're obviously looking for that positive one if we're throwing the javelin there to the right. So in order to find the solutions, what topic do we actually need to know? We need to know obviously how to solve a quadratic, so that could be down to either factorising to solve it, or it could, could be the quadratic formula. Now look at the numbers that are given to us in this function, it's going to be a lot simpler for us to use the quadratic formula, particularly as you would have a calculator for this question. So really, in order to find that number, we just need to type these numbers into the formula. So first of, all, first of all, we just want to write down what the values of A, B, and C are in order to put that in. Obviously, if you have some of the fancier calculators, you can actually just type those numbers and it'll give you the solutions, but we should know how to use the quadratic formula, and I'm not going to assume that everybody has one of those calculators where you can do that. So for part B here, let's just write down those values. So the value of A is the coefficient of t squared, which in this case, and if we'd highlight it, is negative 4.9. So our value of a is negative 
our value of b is going to be the positive 14.7 in the middle there. So b is 14.7, and our value of c is the constant at the end, which is actually at the start of ours, but 12.25. So at this point, obviously, you do need to know the quadratic formula. So again, I'll link that in the video. And if you need to have a look over the quadratic formula, please do feel free to do so, and then come back to this. So plugging this into our formula then, so we've got minus b, so minus 14.7, plus and minus the square root of b squared. Now b is not negative, so I won't worry about putting it into a bracket, but 14.7 squared, and then minus 4ac. We have to extend that because we've got quite a lot going on here. So 4 times a, a is negative 4.9, so times negative 4.9, times c, which is 12.25. There we go, just about fit all of that on the screen. And that's all over 2a. So all over 2a, a is minus 4.9, so 2 times negative 4.9. So typing that all into the calculator, once with the plus sign, and if you type that in with your plus sign, so I'll just indicate that by putting a little plus there, we get the answer negative 0 0.679. Now obviously we know it's not going to be minus 0 0.679 seconds, so we're going to have to go back into the formula using the minus sign, and let's do that now. So back into the calculator, take away the plus, put in your minus, and we get here 3.679. So there is some more decimals there, but I'm going to leave that as three decimal places, or I could say four significant figures. There we go. And again, you could leave it as two or three significant figures, but obviously just write down the way that you're rounding it there, particularly when it doesn't ask you how to round it in the question. So there we go, that's gonna be part B for us. It has to be that positive value there, so our value is going to be 3.679. So you've already seen with modeling quadratics, there's already one extra or additional topic within this that we're gonna to need to use in order to solve them if, it mean, if we are in a question where we do need to find one of those solutions where it's crossing over the axes. So that is part B. We have found after how many seconds does the javelin hit the ground? Well, after 3.679 seconds. And that is the answer to part B. Now we're obviously gonna have a look at part C. So let's get rid of some of this working out because we're not gonna need all of that. We'll keep the answer on the screen, but we'll get rid of all this quadratic formula and everything. And we'll just keep a fresh eye for this next question. There we go. Right, let's just move this up a little bit. There we go, and we can say that that there was part B. Obviously, don't rub your working out in when out when you're doing this, but for the purpose of fitting all this on the screen, we'll go from there. Okay, so for part C, it says write the function of, of t here in the form a minus b brackets t minus c squared, where a, b, and c are constants to be found. So hopefully you are recognizing that there, and that is completed square format. So we do have to complete the square for this quadratic. Now obviously that involves you being able to complete the square for harder quadratics and in this particular case you need to complete the square for a negative quadratic. And I mentioned that at the start of the video and if you're not entirely sure on completing the square when we're doing this for a negative quadratic again, please do go into the description, check that topic out and then come back here and make sure that you're okay with obviously completing the square for a negative quadratic. So in order to do this, I think the easiest way, and there are obviously some slightly different ways of approaching completing the square, but I'm just going to rearrange this quadratic so that the t squared is at the start. So if we just move that piece to the front, that would be minus 4.9 t squared. We've got the plus 14.7 t in the middle, and then we've got a positive 12.25 at the end. Remember, we're not rearranging the like a rearranging it to the other side of that equal sign, we're literally just moving them into a position that looks like a normal quadratic. So from this point here, we obviously need to take the coefficient of t squared out, and in that case, this case that's for the negative 4.9. So we're going to divide everything by negative 4.9. Now don't forget you've got a calculator, so although the numbers don't look very nice, it's relatively simple to do that, you just need to divide all these pieces by the negative 4.9. And when we write that, we put the minus 4.9 on the outside, open up a bracket, and then we'll divide everything now. So we'll get t squared, and again, you just type in this in on the calculator. Feel free to type it in along with me. 14.7 divided by negative 4.9 will come out as minus three, so minus three t. And then 12.25 divided by negative 4.9 comes out as negative 2.5. And there we go, our quadratic is now in a position where we can complete the square. 
So opening up a new set of brackets, so we can just complete the square in the middle, we've still got the negative 4.9. And again, there are different ways of approaching this next step. I like to just complete the square as we always did at GCSE level. So completing the square, halving the coefficient of t there would give us minus 1.5 in brackets squared. If we expanded that bracket, that would give us positive 2.25. We don't want positive 2.25, we want negative 2.5. So in order to complete that squared bracket, I would have to subtract 4.75. And again, you can work that out on the calculator. Hopefully you can spot that though, that to get from positive 2.25 back to negative 2.5, we're gonna have to take away 4.75. And there we go, I can close my bracket. Right, so at this point, again, we're running out of a bit of space. So I'm going to get rid of that first bit of working out and we're just gonna go from this position that we're in at the moment. There we go. So at the moment, we have these particular pieces. We've got the minus 4.9 on the outside and we're going to have to multiply that back in so that we can have a look at those particular elements. So let's multiply the negative 4.9 back in, which just means it goes at the start of the squared bracket. So minus 4.9, open brackets, t minus 1.5 squared, and then obviously we need to multiply that constant at the end by the negative 4.9. So negative 4.75 on your calculator multiplied by negative 4.9 gives us positive or plus 23.275. So there we go, we've completed the square. Not a nice one, but obviously do check out factor completing the square and my negative quadratics video if you're a little bit unsure on that. Now obviously in the question, again, let's have a look at this, let's just highlight that again. In the question, it did ask us to write it in a particular form and it wanted it as a minus and then the complete square bracket there. So we just need to obviously slightly rearrange this. We're gonna move that 23.275 to the start just before the negative 4.9 and that would then read 23.275 take away 4.9 brackets t minus 1.5 squared and there we go and that is in the form that the questions asked us to do and we've completed the square and we've completed that question now you might be asked for obviously what the constants a b and c are and if you are you've got them right there you've got a is 23.275 b is 4.9 obviously because minus the negative was already in the question there and c is 1.5 again the negative is already in the uh, the way that it's written so c is just 1.5 Right, there we go. So that is part C. Uh, again, for the next question for part D, we're not going to need all the working out here, so let's just get rid of that working out. Again, hopefully you're writing this down as you're following along. And there we go. Get rid of all those little pieces. And there is part B. Sorry, part C. <laughs> there we go. Move that up. Right, on to the last part then, part D. And the good thing about these questions is part D is usually always using one of the previous parts. And this one actually tells you which part it wants you to use. So it says using your answer from part C or otherwise find the maximum height of the javelin above the ground and the time at which the maximum height is reached. Now, in order to understand this, you just need to understand turning points of a quadratic and what actually completing the square finds for you. Now, if we think back to our diagram, the turning point is the highest point, this point here on the top of the curve where it stops going up and it starts going down. And that is found by reading the numbers inside our completed square form. And specifically, we read the number in the bracket for our x coordinate and the number at the end, the constant there, for our y coordinate. So if we actually wanted to label this as a pair of coordinates, not forgetting that the number in the bracket, the sign is gonna change there. So it's not gonna be negative 1.5, but it'll be positive 1.5. So this turning point coordinate would be 1.5 and 23.275. Again, if you've forgotten that, I'll stick that link in the description for completing the square as well. Just a little reminder from GCSE level. So we've got all of our numbers. Let's see how we apply that. So it says using your answer from part C or otherwise find the maximum height of the javelin. Well, the height is our Y coordinate. So the height there, I'm just gonna write this as height. And this is question D. So for the height is our Y coordinate, which is 23.275. And the question is in meters. So I would say 23.275 meters. 
For the next part, it has also asked us to find and the time at which the maximum height is reached. And the time there is our x coordinate, as you can see on the x axis, that was our time, and that is the 1.5. So for the time, it's given to us in our coordinate there, and that is 1.5. Looking at the units in the question, the units are seconds. And there we go, and there's our question completed. So as you can see, there was a lot of topics involved there. We had sketching the quadratic, not that that was essential, but it does help just to visualize the question. So sketching a quadratic, we had using the quadratic formula. We had actually in part A, reading the y-intercept and understanding what that meant. We had completing the square and doing that with a negative quadratic in this question. And obviously interpreting that and looking at the turning point. And there we go, that is the end of the video. So we've covered all of these topics, there's an awful lot in there. Don't forget, as I showed you at the start, to go into the video and check out some of those additional lessons if you feel that you need to on any of these topics. So hopefully that was useful and helpful. If it was, again, please don't forget to like the video, share it with your friends, and obviously leave a comment for anything that you'd like to have a look at in the future if any, there's any links that I could maybe post to you that would be helpful. But there we go, see you on the next one.